Welcome to the Radiology Vault, an open repository for radiology educational content designed for learners and medical professionals. Presented by the Michigan Medicine Department of Radiology. Hello, my name is Carol McLaughlin, and we will be talking about ultrasound guided breast biopsies today. I'll be giving you tips, tricks, and troubleshooting advice. I have no disclosures. So the objectives of today, we will discuss the ideal biopsy and planning for that biopsy. We will identify potential challenges of ultrasound guided breast biopsies and how to mitigate them. And throughout the talk, you will be seeing these two icons to alert you of the problems that you may encounter and some tips and tricks. So this is the ideal biopsy. We want everything in a line. So this is our diagram of the breast, our target, which is the mass that we want to biopsy the biopsy needle, and then the blue here is the transducer. We want all of this in a line for an ideal biopsy. The transducer should be perpendicular to the skin, as you can see here, um, and the needle should be directly below the center of the probe. On this probe, there is a little round circle on the probe to show us exactly where the center is. Your transducer may be different, it may be a small line, but it really does have to be directly below the center of the probe, not a little bit to the left or to the right. And as you, I'm sure you already know, the transducer and the needle should be in the same longitudinal axis for breast biopsies. First step and first tip is to measure twice and cut once. You want to plan where you're going to make your incision so that you can always see your needle. So for superficial targets, this is going to be relatively close to your target because you will be able to see your needle parallel to the chest wall with having to go through the least amount of tissue. However, for mid targets, you're going to put your incision a little bit further away to maintain that parallel to the chest wall and to go through the least amount of tissue. For deep targets, you will need to go pretty far away to be able to still see your needle and get to the deep target. I do want to point out that the numbing needle can be your practice needle to determine if your placement of the skin wheel will be appropriate to reach the target with optimal needle visualization. So what about large masses? Where should we make our incision for these? Because they are actually both superficial, mid, and deep lesions. And I would say we want to make our incision a little bit further away than um, you might expect so that we are able to sample multiple areas of the mass. So this would be the superficial portion of the mass. This will be able to get the mid portion of the mass and then also into the deep portion of the mass. As, as you know, uh, breast masses can be heterogeneous. So we want to make sure that we are sampling multiple areas of the mass so that we um, get a good pathologic sample. So you've made your decision and now you've made your incision and you're about to take a sample and you look at the ultrasound screen and you see your needle and the mass. Great, but be careful. You want to make sure you're seeing the entire needle before you take the sample. So in the top diagram, you can see that the tip of the needle and the mass are in the field of view of the transducer, the tip of the needle and the mass and that you're assuming that when you fire the needle that you will see, you will sample the mass. The same for the diagram on the below. You can see part of the back end of the needle and the mass and that you assume that when you fire the needle, you will be getting part of the mass. But what happens is that your needle will go to the side of the mass and that you've actually missed the mass completely within your sample. So what can you do? First, before you take any sample, just look at your hands. If you don't see that the needle is perfectly lined up beneath the transducer, simply adjust the needle. This is what you'll see when you look at your hands. The needle will not be completely parallel with the transducer, and it may not be directly below that center of the probe. So while keeping it directly below the center of the probe, you just line up the needle with the transducer. So what if this happens often? 
I've noticed that a lot of us who are right-handed often have the tip of the needle to the left of us with the back end of the needle to the right of us. And if you stand right in front of the biopsy, your arm will be at an angle. So if you just simply take a step to the left, this can straighten out your arm and you're more likely to have a straight on lined up approach underneath the transducer every time. This can be a very easy fix to a common problem. So the next problem, you thought you had everything in a straight line and you place the biopsy needle and you go to line it up and take your sample, but no longer is it in the same line. Your mass is now to the side. Well, the good thing is that you aren't stuck with your original trajectory. As we were taught in physics, two points always make a line, and your two points are your target and your incision. So they may not be in the same line as you originally planned, but they can always make a line. So I call this the perpendicular pivot. Make sure the transducer remains perpendicular to the chest wall. Anchor at the near end of the incision and then pivot until you find your target. So what this looks like. So right now we have the transducer that's in line with the incision. So you wanna keep the back end of the transducer, the part closest to you and the part at the incision um, fixed while you pivot at that mark. Then you look down at your hands, see how you can adjust and simply line up the needle with the line of the transducer. Caution, do not rock and roll. This technique is very useful during diagnostic ultrasounds to get a clearer image, but it can be very misleading during a biopsy. If you rock the probe, you may think that your target and needle are aligned when they are not, and so you may falsely think that you have biopsied the mass when you have not. Which brings up an additional tip. Getting an orthogonal imaging helps to confirm that your needle is in the target and not to the side of the mass. One of the reasons that the target and the incision may no longer align may be because many times breast masses are mobile. This is especially happens in dense breast and with fibroadenomas. One way to keep the target from being continually pushed away from the needle is to anchor the breast with your fourth and fifth digits. Another tip is for the technologist who is running the ultrasound machine to put back pressure on the opposite side of the breast with the free hand. Next problem, you can't see your needle well. This most often happens with the angle of the needle to the transducer is acute and you have a deep mass. You want the needle parallel with the transducer as much as possible. So what can you do? So again, when planning, make sure you try to make the incision farthest away from your transducer as possible. But if that may not be possible. So the first thing that you can do is to torque the transducer away from you to start to increase that angle. Second, you can torque the needle down to also increase that angle. Therefore, you should hopefully be closer to a parallel transducer and needle. And then as you can see, these will cause divots in the skin, which will also be noticed on the ultrasound images. Here you can see with these pictures that you really need to torque the needle and the transducer to keep them in parallel. These motions are not exaggerated. For example, here's a very difficult biopsy of a deep lymph node. First, we did use a virtual convex setting on the ultrasound machine to see a wider field of view. With the torque of the transducer and the needle, you can now see a better tip of the needle within the target than before. Also, you can see the gel and air within the gap from the torque of the transducer. So why am I harping on making sure you see your needle and are parallel to the chest wall? Well, this was in a case of a biopsy performed at an outside institution that shows that the trough of the needle actually went into the chest wall and our internal review of the outside pathology did show that the pathology included bone. You do want to avoid this. So how else can we avoid the chest wall? Well, most of our needles now allow for an open trough technique, meaning that the needle is fired outside of the breast to expose the trough, 
and then is inserted while watching under the ultrasound guidance to see the tip of the needle and to avoid the chest wall. And then you can scoop under the target to do the biopsies. Here is a video showing this open trough technique. It may take some pressure to push the needle with the trough out as it's not as sturdy as the cock needle, but for a posterior mass along the chest wall or fatty tissue surrounding the target, like the axilla, this method typically works well. As you can see, you also have the added benefit to know that you are in the mass if you torque the needle to show that the mass moves with the needle. Open trough technique is also very helpful for small masses, especially to see that the mass is adequately sampled and within the trough. But as we mentioned, this is usually easier if the surrounding tissue is fatty. If the surrounding tissue is dense, most likely you will need to fire the device in the breast and it's helpful to deploy the trough first, again, to make sure that the mass is in the trough. The other reason is that some needles have a dead space adjacent to the trough, and depending on the throw, you may or may not have the mass within the trough. So if you put the tip of the needle directly next to the small mass and have a longer throw with a dead space, you may end up not biopsying the mass at all. So another option is to use the shorter throw, which does not have the dead space so that you can ensure to have the mass within the trough. The third option is to pull the tip of the needle back so that when you do fire to make sure that the mass is within the trough and not within the dead space. Another tip is to have the technologist hold the probe between the samples to make sure that you don't lose sight of these tiny little masses after the first couple of passes. Next problem, another common problem that we see are blood vessels. The best option um, is to change your trajectory to avoid them altogether. And this goes with our first step of planning, 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 which needs to include color flow images during the planning stage. However, another tip is to use a coaxial needle to cover a blood vessel to make sure you don't biopsy it. So when I know that there are blood vessels nearby and after I have the trough out, I may check for those blood vessels one more time with color flow and then guide the coaxial needle over the trough to cover the vessel before firing. This example shows the blood vessel underneath the coaxial needle, um, but it would work the same if the blood vessel were above the trough and could use the coaxial needle to cover it up. What if you have a mass that is close to an implant? Implants can be tricky and to work around and patients are often anxious about injury to their implant. If the target is close to an implant, it's best to be as parallel as possible to the implant. You can inject lidocaine between the target and the implant to lift the mass off of the implant. And then working very quickly as lidocaine can dissipate quickly, you can use an open trough technique to guide the trough of the needle underneath the mass to take the biopsy sample. These are very tricky, so please don't use this as your very first biopsies. Our last problem that we're going to address is very dense tissue surrounding the target. Typically, these biopsies look like they will be easy. For example, this mass is easily seen in about a centimeter but it actually is going to be tricky because of the dense tissue surrounding it. In these cases, you will want to make the incision closer to the target than you think because the tissue will push away from you as you proceed. It may take a long time to infuse the lidocaine and you may need to biopsy the normal breast tissue proximal to the mass to be able to get to the biopsy to the mass. Make sure that you're using your transducer hand or even the technologist hand for back pressure on the breast. So in conclusion, we wanna plan, 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 adjust, then plan some more. Make sure you're using color flow on those initial images and make sure that you're planning that incision site exactly where you want it to be. When in doubt, look down, look down at your hands and they will tell you a lot, just line them up and oftentimes that will be your only problem that you're having. Pivot and divot, so we wanna do the perpendicular pivot, always keep the transducer perpendicular 
And remember that we don't have to stay in the same planning situation that we thought. If the mass moves, we'll move with it. Divot, we're going to torque our needle and our transducer to get them parallel. And in the end, keep calm and biopsy on. Thank you very much. Good luck. If you have any questions about this topic or video, please feel free to contact me at the above email.